Hi, this uh, video is about asses and bases and it should set you up for dealing with buffers in a lab situation. So this relates to the chapters 11 and 23 out of the textbook Blackman. So asses and bases are probably the most important of electrolytes. Uh, and they're really things that you come across every day. So we know that acids are things like hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid. Uh, but also acids that are prevalent in fruit and vegetables and other foodstuffs, such as acetic acid from vinegar and citric acid from citrus, veg uh, citrus fruit. Uh, acids have a sour taste, so if any of you are keen on cooking, then those sour tastes come from acids in the food. Sourdough bread has a higher acid content that makes it sour. Uh, bases um, have more of a sort of a bitter taste. Um, they have a soapy sort of feel. So if you get um, if you get bases on your hands, you can feel a slipperiness, a bit like soap um, between your fingers. Uh, they're also quite dangerous. So if you do get them on your hands, you need to wash off your hands very quickly because uh, bases are very damaging to your eyes. Uh, common bases are things like sodium hydroxide, which is the principal component of Drano that you put down your sink if it gets blocked. Uh, potassium hydroxide, very similar sort of chemical, and ammonia, which in aqueous solution is ammonium hydroxide. So all of those are common uh, household um, acids and bases. So we've got some acids over here and some bases over here. So sodium bicarb is something you might have played around with before, mixing with vinegar to give off CO2 um, as a bit of a home experiment. So there's three main theories of acids and bases, and they really are in a uh, chronological order. So the oldest theory is the Arrhenius um, acid-base theory, which um, is that acids are a solvated a proton or a solvated hydrogen cation, H+. And that's usually written as uh, H+, plus with uh, aqueous after it, uh, or H3O+, plus, uh, the hydronium ion. And bases, in the Arrhenius um, sense, are hydroxide ions in aqueous solution, so OH- uh, with AQ in brackets afterwards. The second, uh, more recent theory is the Brunsted acid-base theory, and this theory states that acids are substances that are proton donors. It's a subtle difference between this and the Ar Arrhenius definition. So a proton donor doesn't have to involve an aqueous environment, so we don't have to have water around for something to be a Brunsted acid. And similarly, Brunsted bases are substances that are proton acceptors, so it doesn't have to be hydroxide. So it could be another molecule that accepts a proton, has nothing to do with water. And the third and most recent theory of acids and bases are Lewis acids and bases. And this removes the idea of uh, protons being involved entirely. So Lewis acids now are substances in the, um, that can uh, act as electron pair acceptors. So they want to accept a pair of electrons from another species. Lewis bases then are substances that donate a pair of electrons to that uh, Lewis acid. So they're always paired up. There's a Lewis acid paired with a Lewis base. Um, and they can further be uh, sort of um, allocated to either hard or soft in terms of how polarizable they are. And we'll go through that uh, later on. Uh, so each one of these theories uh, have important applications and important implications, and we won't always use uh, any particular. We won't always uh, use them all, but we will choose the ones that are most appropriate for the situation. So important in the uh, realm of uh, acids and bases is the idea of conjugate acid pairs. So for the for the Brunsted Lowry uh, acid base reactions, the forward and the reverse reactions are acid-base reactions. And there's always two sets of species in this uh, situation. So either side of the equation differ by only a proton. So uh, here we've got conjugate acid-base pairs. So on this side we've got hydrochloric acid, and here we've got water. And then they can combine with each other to set up an equilibrium where on the right-hand side we have the hydronium ion and chloride. So here we've got the base being water, and here we've got the acid being hydrochloric acid. And on the other side, we've got hydronium ion being the acid and chloride being the base. And they form a conjugate pair. So the conjugate uh, acid of chloride anion is hydrochloric acid. And the conjugate acid of water 
is the hydronium ion, H3O+. So the, this, uh, this ties in nicely with the concept of pH. So I'm sure everyone's heard of pH. It's a very useful way of thinking about the acidity or the base acidity of a, a solution in an aqueous environment. So the pH is defined as the negative uh, log to base 10 of the hydronium ion concentration. Uh, so in other words, it's the negative log concentration of H plus in solution. Um, there's a very much less used term pOH, and that's the negative log of uh, OH minus concentration. In this case, log means log to the base 10, as opposed to natural logarithms, which are log to the base of E. So pure water at 25 degrees has a proton concentration or a hydronium ion concentration of uh, 1 by 10 to the minus 7, and so therefore the pH of a, a neutral aqueous solution at uh, 25 degrees is 7.0, and we think of that as being a neutral aqueous solution. Um, when we add to an aqueous environment a weak acid or weak base, we change the pH. Um, now, weak acids and bases are defined as those that react incompletely with water. So the extent to which the reaction occurs can be quantified by looking at the values of the equilibrium constants. So if we have a weak acid, HA, in an aqueous environment, it can react with water, the liquid, to give us the hydronium ion, or H+, and the conjugate uh, base of that acid. So A minus is the anion that is the conjugate base of the acid we started with. And the equilibrium constant for this particular um, equilibrium this reaction is, um, can be defined as the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of uh, the anion, the conjugate base, over the concentration of the undissociated uh, weak acid. And so this Ka in this particular uh, situation is called the acidity constant. So now if we have a, uh, a weak base in an aqueous environment, we can take a proton off water to generate OH minus. And now we have equilibrium constant, which is Kb, the basicity constant, which is the concentration of the conjugate acid of that weak base times the concentration of OH minus, hydroxide ion, over the concentration of the weak base that we started with. So Kb is the basicity constant. And the Ka and Kb values are generally significantly less than 1 because we're dealing with weak acids on bases. They're not dissociating much in our aqueous solution. So we can then look at this in log terms. The pKa of a weak acid is negative log of the Ka. Um, and therefore, we can get this reciprocal arrangement where then the Ka is 10 to the power of minus pKa. And we can do the same sort of treatment for the pKb and the Kb. Now weak acids are bases. The strength of a weak acid is determined by this Ka value. And that's something we can actually measure. So the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid. And the smaller the uh, pK, the stronger the acid. So be wary of this inverse relationship. Because it's the negative log value, a large Ka corresponds to a small pKa. So uh, an acid with a pKa of 1 is a stronger acid than something that has a pKa of 4. The strength of a weak base is determined by its Kb value. The larger the Kb, the stronger the base. And the smaller the pKa, pKb, the stronger the base. So once again, this reciprocal um, relationship between the Kb and the pKb. Okay, so if we look at an example, here we've got formic acid. So formic acid is uh, the acid that ants will inject into you when you have a, uh, an ant bite. So obviously it's quite uh, nasty to get it onto your skin or inside, under, underneath your skin. Now if we take formic acid and put an aqueous environment, in the presence of liquid water it will generate some hydronium ion and some formate anion. Now the formate anion will also be in equilibrium between water um, and uh, formic acid to give uh, hydroxide anion. And overall, if we sum up those two possibilities, we get um, 
the uh, two water here and um, over on this side we have the hydronium ion and the hydroxide uh, ion. So the pKa and the pKb summed up give us the um, pKw, the um, uh, negative log of the dissociation constant of water. So these relationships hold for any acid-base conjugate pair, regardless of the strength of the acid or base. So the stronger the acid, uh, the weaker the conjugate base, and vice versa. Okay, so there's the inverse relationship between the strength of the acid and the uh, base members of a conjugate pair. So here's some examples of real-world acids. So uh, this is uh, perchloric acid, and here is chlorate anion. Now chlorate anion is a very stable, uh, perchlorate anion is a very stable anion, and so therefore it's a very weak base, and therefore its conjugate acid, perchloric acid, is a very strong acid, and will have a low pKa. Nitric acid is quite strong, uh, because nitrate anion is a very stable anion. Hydrochloric acid is also a strong acid because chloride is a very uh, stable anion. However, as we go down, hydrofluoric acid is not nearly as strong as hydrochloric because fluoride anion is not as stable as chloride anion. And if we look at acetic acid, this one here, uh, acetate anion is not nearly as stable as chloride, and so therefore acetic acid is not nearly as strong as hydrochloric acid. If we don't go down to water, hydroxide is not particularly stable anion, and so therefore water is not a particularly strong acid. But even weaker than water is ammonia. For ammonia to give away a proton, we would generate the amide anion, NH2-, and this is a very, very unstable anion. And so it much prefers to pull a proton back off water, or off um, hydronium ion, and exist as ammonia. And so ammonia is not uh, very acidic at all. Uh, so notice this inverse relationship between the uh, strength of an acid and how uh, unstable the anion is, or how weak the acid is and how um, stable the anion is. So very weak bases, very stable anions are related to very strong acids. Okay, so that's uh, a little overview of weak acids and weak bases, pKa's, pKb's, and uh, the dissociation constants. Thanks for watching.